Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, it's time to discuss the retina. This is going to be a big one. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it simple uh, to a certain degree because the retina can get quite, quite complicated. And, you know, to follow the theme that we've do, been doing throughout this entire chapter is that we really want to educate on ocular anatomy, but we don't want to overwhelm. And uh, the retina is one of the structures that can sometimes overwhelm. It, it's very complicated. It's uh, it, it, It's got lots of moving parts, well, not moving parts, but it's got a lot of involved parts. And we don't want to go down a rabbit hole here that, <clears throat> excuse me, takes us away from our main goal here and is to understand how it applies to us as opticians. So keeping that in mind, let's start taking a look at the different uh, structures and functions of the retina. So first, once again, the cross section of the eye and the retina actually forms the innermost layer here, that little, you know, the most, the most outside line that I have, or sorry, inside line that I've highlighted here in red, that is the structure of the retina. And it, it's not just at the back, it's actually the entire inside uh, following along where we just talked about where the vitreous is. So the retina is the innermost light sensitive tissue of the eye. Very important concept because this is the powerhouse when it comes to processing images and giving us vision. So the optics of the eye form an image on the retina, which can then translate the image into electrical nerve impulses to the brain. Very, very interesting and powerful mechanism here where we're taking light energy from, you know, the, from the outside world and we're converting it into chemical and electrical impulses and creating a visual image in the brain. Now, the retina is composed of 10 layers. Uh, now, <clears throat> we're not going to discuss every single layer because it really doesn't uh, give you any kind of perks here as far as understanding it better. If you are really interested in anything, and then this goes for any of the stuff we cover in any of these lectures, if you're interested and you want to dig deeper, uh, you can absolutely look this up, you know, a quick Google search or in any textbooks that you have, uh, any anatomy or especially ocular anatomy textbooks, they'll go through every single layer here. However, it's not really pertinent here to what we're trying to learn and what we're trying to understand. And this goes for most things you learn in life is that sometimes if you go into the detail too much, um, it's not productive. But understanding why uh, things are the certain way they are is much more productive for us, especially in our line of work. Um, but we can actually, so without actually naming all these 10 layers, we can talk about how they're grouped into four main processing stages, okay? Um, the first stage and the you know, layers involved in this is photoreception, so capturing light, okay? The next is transmitting it to bipolar cells. So the interesting thing about bipolar cells is that um, they, they have the ability to change their conformation once they're excited. And this is actually what triggers a lot of these nerve impulses later on. Uh, transmits it to the ganglion cells, which another interesting thing about these cells is that the ganglion cells are shared between the retina and the optic nerve, um, which actually helps us understand the pathway of these signals and how they go from, you know, from just being light, refracted into the eye, captured by the retina, and then transmitted. And the ganglion cells are a very big part of this because they, sh they are shared between the retina and the optic nerve. And then, of course, it makes sense that the next step is transmission along the optic nerve. Now, this is a much more simplified version of what, to, what goes on. Everything inside of this that we haven't talked about is a bunch of you know, biochemical, biochemical reactions and all sorts of crazy nerve impulses and things like this that really isn't going to help you understand the overall uh, mechanism of how this works. So just remember, the retina captures the image and then finds a way to change, its chem change the chemistry within itself to be able to transmit it along the optic nerve. Um, and you see here, this is kind of a cross-section of the retina. 
and how all these different layers kind of stack up against each other. And you'll notice here that we have the ganglion cells, we have the bipolar cells, and we have the photoreceptors. So the, the interesting thing about this is that it's kind of backwards a little bit. Um, the way It's kind of flipped the way that it actually, uh, the things actually kind of the sequence of how it goes. So imagine this picture kind of flipped over on the other way so that the photoreceptors are the initial uh, in, have the initial interaction with the light, then it transmits it over to the bipolar cells, then to the ganglion cells, which are t uh, tightly connected to the structures of the optic nerve. So, uh, and of course, the pigment epithelium here too is something I didn't discuss in there, but that's a huge part of the photoreception. And that's actually uh, visible w during an exam if you're looking through the slit lamp. That is like the top layer, the, the innermost layer of the retina and that's what interacts with the light and actually kind of transmits the signal along this pathway. Okay, so the two primary photoreceptors, and you, you've heard of these before, uh, within the retina are the cones which respond to bright light and, and high resolution vision and the rods which respond to dim light and mediate lower resolution uh, vision at night. So I've, I'm sure you've heard of rods and cones and the important thing for you to understand as an optician, because you know the general public has this idea that there's rods and cones. The rods and cones are photoreceptors and these photoreceptors are found in the pigment epithelium and they are the ones that interact with the light that enters the eye. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about them. Uh, the rods are located throughout the retina. So we've talked about how the retina is a, not just a little spot in the eye, it's actually an entire, it's, you know, it's the entire inner layer of the eyeball. Um, so the, the rods are all over the place while the cones are concentrated uh, in the macula. So that's a very specific spot at the back of the retina uh, and the highest concentrations of these cones is in the fovea centralis. Now that is the sweet spot for vision, okay? Uh, the, uh, and the, numerous, the uh, numerous layers of the retina have different metabolic demands and therefore take advantage of two vascular networks, uh, one stemming from the retinal network and the other stemming from the choroidal network. So uh, we talked about how the choroid is the major blood supply of the eye, so it definitely supplies uh, it supplies most of the structures of the eye, including the retina. But the retina has such a high demand for blood, and because it's such a big working, the workhorse of vision, uh, it actually has its own uh, vascular network as, as well with the retinal artery and retinal vein, um, but it also takes some blood from the choroidal network as well. I do want to touch a little bit more on the rods and cones, and um, not necessarily the rods and cones, but the macula and the fovula centralis. These are the two main areas of the retina that we discuss, what we're going to discuss when it comes to how vision works, how refractive error works, how um, basically everything relating to vision always discusses this particular area of the eye. It's actually the most important area that is examined during eye exams as well because without proper function of the macula and of course the fovea within it, vision is not going to be very good. People can have peripheral uh, retinal issues and still not actually have major impact on vision. As a matter of fact, the majority of the peripheral retina helps with night vision and only to a certain degree because you know there's only going to be a certain area at the back of the eye that is actually involved in the visual process. Uh, however, again, I can't stress enough that the macula and the fovea central is both you know a part of the retina, just an area of the retina. These are the most important parts when it comes to vision. So uh, remember, retina is a whole structure. The, uh, it's, it's involved in vision, however, the most important part is the macula and the fovea, and that's because it has the highest concentration of cones. Cones are responsible for our high, high uh, definition vision, daytime vision, uh, and without that, vision would be very, very difficult. So uh, again, we didn't go super deep into this. You can do lectures and lectures. You can do hours on the retina and how it all works. But at the end of the day, it's not gonna help us be better at our job. We have to just understand what the structures do, why they're important, and again, why uh, things are you know important to us as opticians. Now, I forgot to obviously um, 
make these up here one by one. So in an effort to just not have to redo this, let's just kind of highlight what we're talking about. First thing that we need to you know, recognize here uh, is that the retina is important to vision. So, uh, you know, without the retina, vision is not possible. So we always have to have in the back of our mind that, you know, we need to, to know about the retina. We have to incorporate it into our everyday thoughts because without this, it's not going to work out. And of course, retinal problems automatically in, uh, means vision problems. And this one is probably one of the biggest uh, things to think about because Having problems with other structures of the eye will also result in problems, but I don't, th I can't think of a single structure, uh, even the cornea and the crystalline lens, which are so much involved in vision and refraction, they can withstand a little bit of trauma and damage and still provide a person with adequate vision, sometimes uh, not even affect vision at all. It's very rare that a person will have retinal problems without it resulting in visual problems. So very, very important. Remember, we also talked about how the macula and fovea are extremely important, the, the most important part that we have to consider when it comes to the retina. It's also the part that's examined the most and the part that we will be discussing in detail. Every single time I say retina from this po moment forward, whenever we're talking about vision and how, how vision works, always assume I am talking about the macula and the fovea. And my apologies if I don't mention it over and over again. However, let's take this moment here to say that every time I say retina, I'm talking about the macula and fovea unless I say otherwise, all right? And then we talked about the relationship with the optic nerve because you can't have one without the other. And as a matter of fact, retinal health, whenever retinal health is being examined, the optic nerve is being examined at the same time because even though they're two separate structures, they are very much, they're, they, they, they're married. So they cannot work independently. They, ab they absolutely need each other to be able to provide us vision. So always remember that these two, these two structures are permanently together. Um, I mentioned fundus exam because I didn't mention it in the previous slides. And I always want to kind of bring up terms that are going to come up with, with us all the time. Uh, the area that is most commonly examined uh, during eye exams and most commonly discussed is the fundus, and that incorporates the part of the retina that has the macula, the fovea, and the optic nerve, and the optic disc, um, which we will discuss more in the future lectures. However, I want you to remember fundus exam always refers to a retinal exam. You, you will hear that term referred to quite often. Um, there's actually some equipment that's specifically designed for this. Sometimes when you go for pretesting during eye exam, you'll get a fundus camera. Uh, you'll hear the, the, uh, like a fundus cam or a fundus photography. Uh, this is uh, you know, a device that is specifically focused on the fundus and takes an image so that it's usually used for diagnostics, for tracking, to see if there's any changes over, over time. So it's something that I wanted you to really <clears throat> be aware of that you know, whenever we talk about fundus, we're talking about the, uh, the business end of the retina and uh, the importance of screening. Okay, so this is gonna be something we're gonna discuss in detail uh, when we start talking about pathology and managing our patients. However, because I talked about the fact that with uh, if there's retinal problems, there's vision problems, Screening has become one of the number one things that we do in vision care and retinal screening is at the forefront because for that reason that if you have problems with the retina, you are going to have problems with vision and there's so many diseases and ailments that can contribute to the, these, uh, these problems and we know uh, how to avoid them or how to detect them early. Uh, diabetes is a huge one. So the importance of screening patients with diabetes because, uh, you know, diabetes can have major uh, retinal implications and also uh, family histories of, uh, of macular degeneration and things like that. Uh, these are all diseases that affect the retina and can be, you know, vision altering and ultimately vision robbing. So we always know that the importance of screening for all sorts of these retinal issues because we know the implications are very serious for the future. So that covers it for what we're gonna do with the retina today. Uh, we will talk more about the retina uh, in different capacities throughout the, f the following lectures. But for now, I think uh, you've got a pretty good uh, basis for what the retina is, what it looks like, and what its main job is. And we're gonna build on that a little bit more in the future. All right, we're gonna move on to the optic nerve in the next lecture.